Greetings from the great state of Alaska. My name is Dr. G, and today I want to share with you a message of hope. You know, the name that I want to share with you today comes out of the book of Exodus. Matter of fact, if you have your Bibles, we're going to be in Exodus chapter 15. I want to give you a little bit of context and a little bit of background before we jump into the passage of Scripture. Uh, basically, right before this passage of Scripture, we, we see how God has miraculously led the children of Israel uh, across the Red Sea. He basically split the Red Sea. They crossed over on dry ground. And, uh, you know, Pharaoh and his army, they were in hot pursuit of the Israelites. And so Israel made it across, and then God caused the Red Sea to close up on Pharaoh and his army. And so Israel, you know, they've witnessed and experienced God's deliverance and God's provision firsthand. Uh, not just with the Red Sea experience, but even when they were in Egypt. You know, they witnessed the, the ten plagues against Pharaoh and uh, his household and the whole land of Israel, including the Passover. And so we're going to start in verse 22 of Exodus chapter 15. It says here, Then Moses led Israel from the Red Sea, and they went into the desert of Shur, for three days they traveled in the desert without finding water. When they came to Mara, they could not drink its water because it was bitter. That is why the place is called Mara. So the people grumbled against Moses and they said, What are we supposed to drink? So let's just stop there for just a moment. So, you know, the children of Israel, they... They've already forgotten how God has miraculously delivered them from the hand of their oppressor, how God has delivered them uh, from Pharaoh and from certain death. They've already forgotten that. Now they're complaining. Uh, instead of recognizing the assurance and the confidence of their God, they are succumbing to fear and they are murmuring and complaining against Moses himself. It says here, Then Moses cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a piece of wood. He threw it into the water, and the water became sweet. And so this piece of wood, it represented really God's response to a need. You know, the children of Israel, they needed water. And God responded to them through Moses and Moses threw this piece of wood into the water. And so the wood is representative of, of God's provision. And I, I think about the piece of wood that Jesus Christ hung on. He hung on a wooden cross. And it was there at that cross that our bitter position, amen, our, our, our sinful nature, uh, it was there that we received mercy and grace from the hand of God because of the wood and because of Jesus Christ giving his life, dying on the, on the cross for your sin and my sin. Amen. Let's keep going. It says here, there, there the Lord made a decree and a law for them. And there he tested them. He said, if you listen carefully to the voice of the Lord your God, and you do what is right in his eyes, if you pay attention to his commands and keep all his decrees... I will not bring on you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. And we see right here that God revealed himself to Israel as Jehovah Rapha. Jehovah Rapha. Basically, it means God our healer. And so this is a, a, a revelation of another one of God's identities, God's person as the healer uh, of, of his people, Israel. It says, Then they came to Elam, where there were twelve springs and seventy palm trees, and they camped there near the water. And so what I want to do right now, I just want to make sure that you understand that before God revealed himself as Jehovah Rapha, he, he set up four conditions. And those conditions applied to Israel then, and they apply to us today. You see, if we are going to claim the benefits of Jehovah Rapha, if we are going to say, God is my healer, then we need to pay close attention to the decrees of our Lord. Amen? Number one, he said, if you listen carefully 
to God's voice. Now we talked about this a couple weeks ago and we said that God is our shepherd and his sheep know his voice. And so this is really very similar if you listen carefully to God's voice. And so today there's many voices in the world. Our government has a voice. So the politicians have a voice. Doctors have a voice. Uh, there's many, many voices in the world. But the one that we really need to listen to is the voice of our God. Okay. Number two, if you do what is right in his eyes. And so once again, one of the conditions is that we do what is right in the eyes of the Lord. You see, there's a lot of people who do what's right in their own eyes. They do what seems right to them. As a matter of fact, I believe in the book of Proverbs, it says, There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And so we have to be really careful to do what's right in the eyes of the Lord, okay? Number three, if you pay attention to God's commands. If you pay attention to God's commands. Now, a lot of people, they, they ignore God's commands, to be quite frank. They just ignore God. They blatantly go in the wrong direction. And you see, you can't do that and expect God to be your healer. You can't go against the grain and expect to receive the benefits of God, although the benefits of God are available to everyone. That's what the grace of God is all about. It's extended to those who don't deserve it. Number four, if you follow God's direction. And so once again, if you're doing your own thing, if you're uh, you know, like the sheep that has went astray, you're going to encounter bad people. You're going to encounter bad circumstances, and, and you're going to wander off from the sheepfold and it's going to be hard for God to minister healing to you when you're doing your own thing and going your own way. And so these four, <clears throat> excuse me, these four conditions, these are predecessors to experiencing the blessings of Jehovah Rapha. You see, the word healer, let's just talk about this for a minute. The word healer, healeth, and health, all these words come from the root word for heal. And so when God says, I am the Lord who heals you, or I am the, the Lord your healer, what he is saying is, I am the Lord who preserves thee in health, as well as heals thy diseases. And you see, God is so good to us, isn't he? That he, he not only gives us health benefits, <laughs> but he fixes and repairs what's broken in us. He heals us. And so the word heal, it implies several things. It implies to repair, to take care of, to purify, to bind up, to make fresh. This is ultimately what a physician or a doctor does for his or her patients. Amen? In essence, God, I guess you could say, is our primary care physician. Amen? God is our primary care physician. When you go to the hospital and they ask you, who is your primary care physician? Tell them it's Jehovah Rapha, the one and only true God. <laughs> I got to wonder if they would write that on the paper or not. But it's true. We should always turn to God first when we are dealing with any kind of sickness or disease or deficiency in our bodies or in our spirits or in our minds. We need to turn to our primary care physician, because there's no one like Jehovah Rapha. The best doctors here on earth cannot do what Jehovah Rapha can do. Now, I'm not saying we shouldn't go to the medical clinic down the street. I did not say that. What I said is we need to go to God first. So there's a big difference. It's okay to go to, to the health clinic down the street, but make sure you go to God first. Give God the benefit of the doubt. Let him heal you. Now, God doesn't always heal us the way we want to be healed. I, I've experienced healing, and then I've experienced times where I wanted healing, and I didn't get it. And so we can't, in our temporary minds or in our human minds, understand why God heals in some instances but not in others. But that's up to God. We just trust him. Amen? We just put our faith in him. I, I want to look at a few more scriptures in the Old Testament. 
Let's turn to Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 17. It says here, But I will restore you to health and heal your wounds, declares the Lord. Because you are called an outcast, Zion, for whom no one cares. And you see, the prophet Jeremiah, he recognized God as, as a healer. Amen. Let's go to Jeremiah 3.22. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 22. It says here, Return, faithless people. I will cure you of backsliding. Yes, we will come to you, for you are the Lord our God. You see, we don't think that God can cure us, but he can. And it's, it's revealed throughout the scriptures that God is calling us, Come to me, let me heal you. And it's not just physical healing that he offers, it's even spiritual healing. Here he promised to heal or to cure their backsliding. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 30, verse 26. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 26. It says here, uh, The moon will shine like the sun. And the sunlight will be seven times brighter, like the light of seven full days, when the Lord binds up the bruises of his people and heals the wounds he inflicted. You see, God is a healer. He's a willing healer. He wants to heal his people. He wants them to follow those conditions I shared earlier, but he wants to minister healing to his people. Amen. We serve a wonderful God, a beautiful God. Isaiah 61 1. Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. There's those two words, bind up. God wants to bind up those who are emotionally wounded or bruised. What a wonderful God we serve. Today, if that's you, if you're suffering emotionally, give God an opportunity to heal you. Amen? Give him an opportunity. Psalm 103, verse 3. Psalm 103, verse 3. The, the sun is coming through my window, so it's <laughs> blinding me a bit, but that's okay. Bless God. 103, verse 3. It says here, uh, well, let's go to verse 2. It says, Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and he heals all your diseases. You see, God is, is a healer. He's very capable. He's very willing. We just have to be submitted and come to him on his terms and allow him to minister healing to us. Amen. You know, each of these scriptures, they, they really reinforce God's role as, as our healer. And these scriptures admonish us to turn to God when we're hurt, to turn to God when we're in pain. And if we have any kind of wounds, we should be turning to God. Let's pray, brothers and sisters. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you today for, for this wonderful scripture, God, that the good news that you're not just a Savior, which that would have been enough for me. But God, you're also our healer. Lord, you're, you stand ready and willing and, and available to heal us, body, soul, and spirit. And so, God, I pray for those who are watching and listening. Lord, if they're suffering today, God, if they have any kind of wounds or, or uh, pains or, or bruises, God, I pray that they would quickly come to you, that they would quickly come to you. Lord, I think about my mother Donna today who is sick. Lord, a matter of fact, she's at the emergency room with my sister. I pray in Jesus' name, God, that you would heal her. Lord, that Jehovah Rapha would come to her aid quickly. God, that you would relieve the pain that she's in. Stop the bleeding. Stop the pain and the discomfort, God, that you would minister to her. In the name of Jesus, I ask you, Lord, Lord, that you would be victorious over whatever this is that's inflicting my mother. Oh, Jesus, I thank you, God. 
I thank you, Lord, that you're hearing my prayer today. And I'm believing in faith, God, that you're going to touch her right now. Lord, she's there to see the doctor. But God, you are her primary care physician. And God, I come to you first on her behalf. Heal her in Jesus' name. I ask you, Lord. I ask you. I don't command you, but I ask you, Lord, because you love her. She's a servant of the Most High God. And Lord, you know the condition she's in. Heal her, I ask, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. I hope you have a blessed day.